This is 2020's Dead Reckoning. Warning, spoilers ahead. We open up to an FBI agent, Gardner, who's giving a news report to the reporters, and we see that it's playing in a nearby bar as he talks about a murder that happened in the subway that past fall. At the bar, Marco watches, but then we get a flash to a brawl that happens in an apartment with Agent Cantrell and the man that's been murdered. Gardner talks about how Cantrell was following a lead, and that's the end of the official statement. What we don't see is that the man flushes the evidence to the lead, and after the man grabs a butcher knife, Cantrell shoots the man down. Later, we see a plane flying through a serene skyscape, and Agent Gardner's flying with a woman as she FaceTimes a loved one. Then, the plane literally just starts losing altitude, and the plane crashes. If you're a little confused on the progression of this movie, you're not alone. It's all over the place. And after all that, we jump ahead six months to Nantucket Island. Now, we meet Nico as he drives down the road at nighttime, and he eventually makes it to a little bonfire that everyone's waiting at. Suddenly, Tilly pops up on her bicycle, and she's already had a nice pregame session on the way there. Lou introduces Nico to Tilly and Felicity, but Tilly doesn't make it very far before getting disqualified for throwing up. When Nico realizes how messed up Tilly is, he offers to take her home, and Lou seems a little uneasy about sending her home with him. On the way to Tilly's house, the two of them get a little more acquainted, and Tilly starts to think that Nico is really sweet. Suddenly, Tilly has him stop the car, and she hops out to strip down and go skinny dipping. Well, that's one way to introduce a stranger to the area. Somehow, Nico actually turns her offer down, and she pops back out to go home. She doesn't even bother to put her clothes on, she just pops out, grabs her clothes, and hops in the car. Apparently, Nico only refused because he doesn't know how to swim. That's a terrible reason. You're gonna learn today. When they finally get to Tilly's house, Nico tries to find out more about her, and she gives him her number before walking out. Nico tells her that he'll get her bike fixed, and he'll call her when it's ready. When Tilly gets inside, she tries to sneak upstairs, but Jennifer calls her over to the kitchen. Jennifer's worried about Tilly, and Chris tries to point out that she's only as worried as Tilly's mother would be if she was still alive. After Tilly goes upstairs to take a shower, Jennifer heads over to the mantle to find the bottle of alcohol that Tilly tried to hide, and Chris tries to tell her that this is only normal for someone that's mourning the loss of parents like Tilly is. The next day, Agent Cantrell gets to the island, and he has the most epic soundtrack and entrance I've ever seen. Cantrell heads inside an airfield to talk to Phyllis about the gardeners who crashed six months prior. He seems to think that someone had tampered with the aircraft, and Phyllis just gives him all of the logs for the aircraft. Across the island, Nico heads to Tilly's house, and Jennifer answers the door to invite him in while he waits for her. She asks him about why he comes to the island, and he talks about how his mother used to love coming here. When Tilly gets downstairs, she hands him a towel, and the two of them head into town to pick up her bike. Tilly tells him that she's going to have to show him around town, and the two of them ride bikes around the island. When they get to the bike path, an older biker speeds through them and knocks Tilly off of her bike. So Nico tries to catch up with him, but his bike isn't made for speed. When he comes back to Tilly, she's happy that he came back, and she finds out that he's actually Albanian. That seems like a really minute detail, but they've already pointed that out about four times. It's a bit excessive for a character that's only been on screen for about eight minutes. Meanwhile, Cantrell goes through surveillance camera footage, and he spots a man that snuck back to the plane before takeoff. When he freezes the footage, he gets the headshot he needs to track him down, and he calls Agent Hanley to tell him that the perp is headed for Nantucket Island. Cantrell is Tilly's godfather, and he seems to think that the man is headed there for revenge. Meanwhile, Tilly and Nico head back to her house, and she gives him a goodbye kiss to thank him for a wonderful day. Nico rides away, and Chris pops up to ask Tilly about Nico. Suddenly, things take a turn when a big boat rides out of the fog like a bat out of Silent Hill hell. When they reveal that the bad guy is actually a clean-shaven Marco, the music gets ridiculous. I'd almost think that this movie was actually some sort of parody, but no, it's super serious about all of this. This composer wasn't messing around. Nico heads to the dock, and he actually knows Marco. The two of them greet each other, and they head onto the boat to catch up. On the beach, Tilly and Chris walk and talk about Nico, and Chris starts to ask if she really knows anything about him. By the end of the conversation, Chris gives Tilly her seal of approval on Nico. Back on the boat, Marco asks Nico to show him a video of the famous 4th of July beach party, and Marco tells his brother that they need to do something big. It turns out that the man that was killed in the beginning of the movie was also their father. And Marco takes Nico into the boat to tell him a plan he has. Later, Nico goes to meet up with Tilly, and she starts to ask about his family. She finds out that his parents are dead, and Tilly decides to show Nico the video of her parents dying on the plane six months ago. It's all connected. What a coincidence. This can only end well for everybody, obviously. Suddenly, Lou shows up with a cooler of goods, and Felicity isn't too far behind him. Meanwhile, Cantrell heads to the cemetery to pay respects to Tilly's parents, and he heads inside the nearby church where Jennifer is celebrating her first year sober. He meets up with her after her meeting, and he tells her about how the plane was sabotaged before her brother died. He opens up more and more about why he's really there, 
and he shows her a picture of Marco to tell her that they might be in danger. When Cantrell hears that Tilly's new boyfriend is from Eastern Europe, he gets on the defensive, but he plays it cool. He sends her the picture of Marco, and they part ways for now. Later, the 4th of July celebration starts in town, and Chris is getting ready at the bar she works at. Meanwhile, Nico and Tilly chill on the beach, and Cantrell spies on them from the sidelines. After some drunk high and mighty rich boy kicks them off his part of the beach, they head somewhere else. Guess what, Marco's spying on them too. They're really invested in the lives of Nico and Tilly. I'd imagine that Marco has some big scheme to plan and Cantrell literally just needs to look a little past the kids to find Marco, but no, they want to watch the kids make out on the beach. Nico takes Tilly to the bar that Chris and Jennifer own, and he introduces Tilly to some of his friends. When Chris spots Tilly, she stops by to say hello, and she takes Tilly's drink. Once Chris leaves, Tilly steals Nico's drink, and they continue their night. Suddenly, Chris hops up to the mic to dedicate a song to Tilly and Nico, and they head out onto the floor to slow dance. While they dance, Tilly thanks Nico for being him, and she explains that this is the first time she's felt happy since her parents died. Cantrell is still spying on them from the shadows. So is Marco. They're literally in the same place. And all Cantrell has to do to catch his man is to stop looking at Tilly and Nico for a couple of minutes. Later, Nico drops Tilly off, and he surprises her with a puppy. When did he stuff a puppy in the van? They've been together all day. Nico takes the puppy with him since Jennifer doesn't allow dogs, and he heads out. Cantrell follows him in his own car, but back at Tilly's house... Jennifer tells Tilly about what Cantrell did to her. Cantrell follows Nico to the docks where he watches Nico visit Marco on his boat. Nico walks in on Marco getting it on with a woman, but Marco kicks her out naked as soon as he spots Nico. Cantrell grabs the woman in the parking lot and he asks her about Marco. On the boat, Nico sits while Marco pours them some drinks and Marco asks him about Tilly. Marco tries to make Nico see that Tilly is no good for him, but Nico swears that Tilly wouldn't betray him. Nico says that he needs to go get some rest, and Marco reminds him to bring the truck tomorrow so he can take his special fireworks to the big 4th of July event. Ah, Cantrell finally gets on Marco's boat. Cantrell really is epic. I don't know how Marco survived that kick down the stairs, but somehow he did. Cantrell isn't just holding his own though, he's out for blood. He grabs the fire axe, but he loses it soon after. That doesn't matter though. He grabs one of those fishing hooks and he rips Marco's insides. Cantrell ties Marco up with the zip ties, and he looks around the boat for some more evidence of where the money and bombs are. He spots a flash drive that matches the one Marco's father flushed down the toilet, and he pulls it out of the computer. If you weren't expecting a jump scare in this movie, join the club. You get one, though. That flash drive blows up, and Cantrell goes flying back. Thank you for shooting my pulse sky high. In the morning, Nico shows up, and he comes downstairs to find Marco tied up and Cantrell's unconscious body. When he sees Marco's wound, he tries to tell him that he needs a doctor, but Marco wants to stick to the mission. He has Nico untie him, and Marco finally mentions that he has 5 million from their father. Marco has them put the special fireworks in the truck, and he sends him to deliver them. Nico goes to Jennifer, and he convinces her to treat Marco in her clinic. When Nico steps out to talk to Tilly, Jennifer gets a good look at Marco, and she tries to text Tilly about him being connected to Nico. Marco stops her by slamming her around the clinic room, or so he thought. Everybody in this movie is ruthless and a thousand percent dangerous. She's been slammed around the room, and she doesn't even have a single scratch on her. If you slam my head into a metal table, I'm gonna have the biggest forehead and bruise you've ever seen. Nico heads inside to find Jennifer getting ready to stab Marco, but she gets distracted. Marco takes advantage of the distraction, and he stabs Jennifer in the neck. Nico tries to help her, but it's too late. Nico places a sheet over her, and he helps Marco out of the clinic while grabbing Jennifer's phone. It turns out that the text did end up going through, and now Tilly is on high alert. Meanwhile, Lou comes out of the liquor shop, and he notices Nico driving in his pickup truck. Marco tells Nico that he has to hide the money, and he mentions that other martyrs will be in touch soon. The timer's set to go off at noon, and Nico helps Marco to his boat. Little do they know that Lou is taking a picture of them before he drives off. Once on the boat, Nico gets a call from Tilly, who's outside of Jennifer's clinic, and Nico agrees to come pick her up. This is all turning into one big mess. Is anyone going to make it out with a happy ending? I'm not entirely sure it's going to be possible for any of them at this point. They should just be happy to make it out alive. Tilly calls Chris to tell her about her aunt being missing, but Nico shows up just then. He tries to talk her down, but she knows that something's wrong. Even when Tilly asks him if he recognizes the picture of Marco, he denies it, and she sends him on his way. After Nico leaves, Tilly tries to call Cantrell, but his voicemail has the number of Agent Hanley on it. On Nico's way back to the boat, he calls Lou to have him call and comfort Tilly, but when he gets on the boat, he finds Marco watching the fireworks. Marco tells him to take the money and leave, and he tells Nico that their father fought their own people in exchange for visas. 
Nico tries to see if there's anything other than hate in Marco, but it becomes clear that he only exists for the cause. Nico tosses the bag of money onto the little boat nearby, and he leaves Marco to die alone. When Nico gets the boat to the other dock, he unloads the bag of money and he leaves the rest of the cargo covered. There's nothing keeping him on this path. Why is he still going forward with Marco's plan? He could literally be with Tilly and still have the $5 million. Later, Nico heads to the beach with Tilly, and he has the bags of explosives in the bed of the truck. He tells Tilly that he just wants to walk away from the big crowds once they get to their destination, and she agrees. After they get out and say hi to everyone, Lou tells Tilly about how he saw Nico helping a man onto the yacht that's floating out to sea, and Tilly immediately jumps into the water to swim out to it. When Nico realizes where Tilly's paddled off to, he decides to grab a nearby board to do the same. Tilly climbs aboard, and she rushes around the boat to see what she can find. Eventually, she finds Marco's dead body, and she immediately questions him about what happened. Nico tells her about everything, and she pushes him into the open water. Boy can't swim! Definitely didn't think that one through. She dives in to get him, but I don't really see her being able to pull that one off. Sure enough, she comes back onto the boat empty-handed, and she hears Marco's watch counting down from five minutes. She speed paddles back to the beach, but she finds that Agent Hanley is already there and found the Yeti bags only had alcohol and weed. He asks Tilly about where Marco and Nico are, and he explains that he got a 911 tip from Cantrell's phone that led them to him on a boat at the dock. Cantrell is at the hospital and he's going to be just fine. He apologizes to Tilly for all of her loss, and he hears the bomb squad that there isn't any sign of an IED around the truck. Suddenly, the yacht blows up, and Tilly cries on Felicity's shoulder in Nico's truck. She finds that she has a text that Nico sent her before they went out to the boat, and it gives her a picture of where he buried the money. All of this could have been avoided, Nico could have saved this situation. He did okay, but he definitely could have done better. And look at that, Nico gave her an SD card with an entire confession on it to ask for forgiveness. It's actually really depressing that he just drowned to death. It's the most ironic and non-heroic way possible. It turns out that Tilly made sizable donations to victims of the bombings, and Nico's body was never found. Then, the credits roll. Well, now I'm depressed. All in all, it was a good movie that was based on a part of the story you don't really hear about. Give it a shot. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next, and I'll see you in the next video.